these are people's lives and there's so much suffering and the only way that that's going to have any sort of positive ending is if we start thinking of other humans as our neighbors, our friends, and our loved ones. Like those are the people we need to look out for. Socialism is the only thing that's going to kind of heal this nation from so many decades of just economic injustice and other types of injustice. It's all tied together to me. You know, as I was a foster care person, you know, I'm, you know, uh, you know, so for me, I saw a lot of that suffering when I was very young, and I know how many people are just under that rug, and they've been swept there. And um, so, anything that we can do, you know, yeah. to try to get that message out, I think will have a really good ending result for everyone in this country. It's Maureen Kevin, and we're on our way, well I'm on my way to Grand Central Station, on the road to Super Tuesday. Great. It's really cold. Wow, it appears as though I'm the first one here. That never happens. We're here. We're here. We're here. There's a the clock. clock. <laughs> We're going to Avis. That clock's bigger than the one in the Central. It's actually true. You know, we're on the road to Super Tuesday now. Woo! So, yeah. tell me, tell me kind of your takeaways from Iowa, what you're taking from Iowa into this road trip to Super Tuesday, um, and what you're anticipating for this trip. I cannot believe we're on the road again. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. That's right. I feel more prepared this time, mm -hmm. and I feel like I know what we need to get and like how people react to us, like the story we're after, like right. the where the personal like intersects with the politics. And right. All that. I think something that we learned, especially in Iowa, is that you never really know what's gonna happen. I think we went in and we had no like I thought that we would have more support for Biden, I guess. Which was very odd. I don't know, this, that whole thing was just very, very strange. It didn't turn out the way I expected it, for sure. You never know. That's what I was thinking, the narrative this whole time since Iowa has been Bernie leading, and we heard that in Iowa the whole time, and then he, it was Pete for a second, but now like yeah. New Hampshire and um, whatever. It's, it's all Bernie talk now, and he's leading. And I was thinking like, we're going up in the Northeast. I think I think it's gonna be Bernie in the yeah. states we're going to. But Super Tuesday, it's like all over. And I think we need to leave the narrative open enough. Yeah, that it might not that be it might Bernie. be like a lot of peak news yeah. or Bloomberg news, well, and like they're gonna come back up, and like Bernie's gonna have to like fight for his position. Yeah, I wonder if that trend that we saw in Iowa is gonna carry out. The big Bernie thing is that he brings out new voters. Exactly. I know. I don't think he'll switch uh, Republican. Is it really about getting uh, moderate Republicans to vote for the Democratic candidate, or is it about getting people who don't typically vote yeah. feeling inspired enough to go to the ballots? It's really cold. You look so cute and bundled up. <laughs> I'm freezing. Now that's a clock, says Asha. Clock. <laughs> They're literally directing us to a J Crew on the Yale campus. It's very okay, This is pretty cool. Oh. Alright guys, so we are here on Yale's campus with Sajel. So, Sajel, go ahead and tell us, when you're thinking about the presidential election and looking forward into 2020, what issues do you want to see addressed the most? 
Um, I think one of the most important things to me um, looking, I'm a Democrat, so looking into the primaries is electability. Um, I really think I'm really strongly against the current administration and I want to see changes pretty drastically. Um, and aside from that, I think I'm really most, like I care most about um, the climate. I think that we're really undervaluing the importance of saving the environment. Um, and I also think it's important to think about things like health care um, and just like mainly just economic equ equity for everyone. And what does that mean to you, the term electability? Yeah. Um, so I think looking for, for me particularly, I think a slightly more moderate candidate. I think my personal views are definitely more to the left. But I think that it's important that we hear everyone's views in the country and kind of understand that a lot of us live in a bubble. I think I definitely live in a bubble. And I think that understanding, um, you know, everyone's views in the country and maybe a more moderate approach, more compromises. Um, and I think there are definitely some candidates in the primary that have that. Um, but I don't know. I'm still really unsure. <laughs> if you had to guess right now, given that Super Tuesday hasn't happened yet, we're still waiting on South Carolina, who do you think is the most electable out of the whole bunch? I want to say Warren. Um, I think I would have said Biden like two or three weeks ago, um, but he's been doing pretty badly in some of the earlier um, um, caucuses and primaries. And so I want to say Warren, but I think Bernie has a very strong momentum going for him. Um, I don't personally agree with his rhetoric, but um, if it comes down to it, if he's the nominee, I will vote for him. Do you think a lot of people are going to come out to vote in 2020 more than normal? I think definitely so. I think politics has become, it's gone from more of a like, oh, you have to be really like informed and involved in politics and care about it to more of really just like, I think it's a conversation that a lot of people are having. It's come into the national spotlight a lot more um, in the last four years. And I, I think that's a good thing. We snuck onto this quad yeah. in the math and physics department at Yale. So we're gonna try and talk to some students. Are you filming right now? Yeah. We're not supposed to be here. We're very nervous. It's like very empty. It's probably the most dangerous thing I've done aside from like see one movie and pay for it and then not pay for the second one. Wow. Class is definitely in session. Yeah. It's such a fresh eye on like you guys as, as a crew. <laughs> Really? Really? I'm like, I would talk to us. We look I nice. know. <laughs> we do look nice. We look like approachable people. We do. Oh my god, I'm in the math department. Oh my god, someone's coming. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. I'm like, oh my god, is she gonna say yes? Is she gonna say no? Is she gonna say yes? Is she gonna say yes? Is she gonna say no? Is she gonna say yes? Yay! Oh, cool. Thank you. When you think about 2020. If you had to name a couple of things that are of concern to you that you want to see presidential candidates address, what would be a couple of those things? Okay, I think one that like is way far what I care about more than anything else is healthcare for people my age. So, I mean, I have a pretty specific storyline as to why um, my dad's like a doctor, but he's in clinical research. So I kind of grew up exposed to high end healthcare, like the costs of like specialty drugs and the luxuries of like having the best of the best in the U.S. Um, but then I spent my last summer working in rural Wyoming so I was working as a housekeeper um, and for sure like definitely an experience that might get romanticized a little bit somewhere at Yale like people are like oh the experience whatever but like what I really took away from that was the people I was working with were all about my age but they came from very they mainly had grown up in like farming communities in Colorado or something and none of them had access to health care they didn't have health insurance um, someone I got really close to excuse me it had debilitating like OCD anxiety mm -hmm. which like already coupled with housekeeping is terrible that was just like a very striking moment for me mm -hmm. um and I want to go into healthcare policy when I grow up and I just feel like there's so much to be done and people say it's almost impossible because it's such a like multi-layer deep-seated issue um and even just like what Americans care about mm -hmm. Because um, we value like the newest and the best at all times when really that's not accessible to most people and maybe we should be reallocating those resources elsewhere. So it's been interesting like seeing campaigns run on like healthcare for all and everything because I just took a class. Our final lecture was that healthcare for all is not possible and Medicare for all is not like 
something that any camp, um, person running for president should be claiming they can do because that's not going to happen within the next eight years. That's something I'm really weary about listening um, to the campaign debates and everything. Yeah. Um, people just kind of throwing out the idea of Medicare for all and people my age being like Medicare for all. Like that's like what they care about when I know that that's not really the solution. If academics believe that Medicare for all in the next eight years is not possible, what is? So I think the biggest problem right now is kind of uh, the things we value in the U.S. And you can't really change that with policy. And my professor was like, I don't know how to change that. But like until Americans stop like not valuing the best and being willing to pay whatever it takes to get like two weeks more out of life, nothing can really be done. Because right now the way our healthcare system is structured is that Things are so expensive because people are willing to pay for, the really rich are willing to pay for that, and then the poor aren't getting the support they need. What was that like for you when you were doing that job in rural Wyoming? Was that really the first time that you kind of understood what it's like to not have health care and what someone without health care coverage might be going through? Yeah. Um, I mean, I talked touched a little bit about how it's a romanticized kind of like thing like I got to Yale and a lot of people want to have that little experience that like breaks their cycle of privilege or whatever and like I admit like I came from like a very like well-educated comfortable background and I came to Yale and this is just like an exaggeration of that um but I mean it what the truth is that it was a break from like what I'm used to and Sometimes I feel bad talking about it because like three months doing that and being able to just remove myself and go back to what I'm used to is very different from people my age who are like that is their like lived kind of like what they've been doing and what they're going to continue to do. Um, So it was like I hate saying that it was shocking, but like it was and like I'll admit that because that's just a product of how I've been raised. But I feel like thinking about it and I'm still like trying to kind of unpack all the things I've learned from that experience is way more valuable than just being like oh I had that and now I'm gonna go like I don't know do my little fancy internship in New York right if you had to guess what outcome do you think is going to happen with the democratic primaries come up coming up and then with the presidential election (sighs) it's hard for me to say um I think this is a little bit of a cop-out answer, but just, like, I'm going to t- like, what a lot of my peers yeah. think is going to happen. Um, most people think Bernie's going to win the primary, and no one's really quite happy about that. And they think that because Bernie is going to win the primary, the Democrats aren't going to win this upcoming election. Is that why they're not happy about expecting yeah. Bernie to win? Yeah, I think that's definitely it. And, I mean, you're going to find Bernie supporters on campus, but... Um, most people are kind of, they've kind of resigned to the fact that we're not going to win the 2020 election, which is sad, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially on such a liberal campus mm-hmm. like Yale. I mean, I definitely don't speak for anyone, and I'm yeah. sure that yeah. <laughs> if my peers saw me, like, saying this, they might, like, throw an egg at me. But, I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> they throw an egg at you specifically. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, that's just a sentiment that I've heard yeah. a lot recently. That's yeah. That's really and how much you said that, like, most people here were basically really just dissatisfied to hear that Bernie was going to win and everyone thinks we're all going to, like, lose. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're a Democrat, you think you're going to lose the scary. election. It's just very dark. I just saw dark clouds. <laughs> well, no, and I've noticed that, um, I noticed that with the other, with the other woman, too, like, they are much more like moderate and think, thinking about both sides mm-hmm. on this campus. And I actually really appreciate that because right. when, when I was at Smith, it was like f***ing <laughs> tunnel vision. So most people wanted actually Bernie because like they right. didn't, Hillary was too moderate. Right. And it was just like such a bubble. And she was saying it was a bubble too here, but like they're clearly critically thinking here. And then she's talking Just such common sense Medicare. what she was talking about. And you can't have Medicare for all. I know, I wanted to ask her like what Tell us, tell us more. Can you send us your syllabus? <laughs> yeah. Tell us more about why Medicare for All isn't going to totally. ever pass. Because you don't hear people talking about that. I know that's a perspective, but you don't hear people talking oh. about that in liberal spaces. No. I'm her biggest fan. Yeah. I we love her. Fan. Catherine, we love you. <laughs> she shared her free Japan from Great Britain. That was so nice. And it was, she insisted. I know. She insisted multiple times. We couldn't say no. And it was very yummy. It was. This is for you, Ashley. Oh, 
אני. לכן את האסטר מלוקה. אסטר מלוקה. Shoe fix, I got my shoes fixed there one time. Bye. Okay. Well, they go see Bernie. I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna start editing this very video. How meta is that? We're going to a Bernie Sanders rally where Bernie is going to be speaking. So we're really excited. Don't really know if we're gonna get in or not. Um, we're hoping that our great, awesome, one of a kind press badges will get us there. It's gonna be really interesting. We're excited to talk to the people that have come out, whether they're Uber Bernie fans that have been, you know, have this marked on their calendar since it was announced, or if they're people that are actually voters there just to learn. But these are people's lives, and there's so much suffering, and the only way that that's gonna have any sort of positive ending is if we start thinking of other humans as our neighbors, our friends, and our loved ones. Like, those are the people we need to look out for. Socialism is the only thing that's gonna kind of heal this nation from so many decades of just injustice and other types of injustice it's all tied together to me you know as I was a foster care person you know, I'm, you, know uh, you know so for me I saw a lot of that suffering when I was very young and I know how many people are just under that rug and they've been swept there and um, so anything that we can do you know yeah to try to get that message out I think we'll have a really good ending result for everyone in this country I just think it's important especially for younger people to come out because this is our future and we just really need a voice in these like big decisions in our country. Can I ask you guys how old you are? Um, I'm 18. I'm also 18. What is the most important issue for you guys? I think, um, I have two. I think we need to focus a lot more on gun control still. I know they're working on it, but there's a lot more that needs to be, needs to happen, needs to be done. And I think um, a lot about healthcare needs to be done because a lot of people can't afford it and they're dying of things that like are easily like treatable, but they just can't afford the treatment. What brought you out here today to come to Bernie's rally? Um, well, as a student, I think one of the big issues in our country is uh, the student debt crisis. And I think Bernie Sanders is one of the only people who takes the issue seriously. That's just one reason he takes the environmental issues very seriously and I think some of the other candidates really don't focus and realize that in the next decade like we're gonna see extremely like horrifying uh, natural disasters from that. Um, as a female I think it's really important to support Bernie because um, of his views on Medicare and I think it's really important to have Medicare for all. Um, so yeah, I really think Bernie, last election, I, I, I wasn't too confident in him and now with, uh, with the new candidates, I think he's one of the best fits. Yeah. What made you guys want to vote for him in 2016 and what do you think that he's saying now that's different from back then in a way that's going to galvanize the rest of the country to make him the nominee? I'll let you guys uh, um, just the idea of health care for everybody is really important and we've seen with the current administration that we need to change so yeah that's why I'm here. Uh, health care and student debt you know being a recent college graduate like it's gonna start hitting soon and it's really 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 hard to like pay off something like that especially when it, as someone that's come from like a low-income household and stuff like that so yeah. Uh, definitely health care, Green New Deal, climate change is very important so that's that's the main reason I support him. And what are you curious about? Um, I want to hear about his foreign policy and uh, how he wants to do this whole Green New Deal thing. So my parents were always in the military and I realized like having health insurance my entire life was like a blessing but not everyone has that opportunity. So yeah, I think everyone deserves it because it's not something that you should just be able to earn but you should have since when you're in a, like just born. I don't want to trip. All right. <laughs> do you guys think that Bernie's going to get the nomination? I think he's going to get the nomination, yes. For sure, no doubt. Clean sweep, all 50 states. Really? So do you guys think after Super Tuesday, you think Bernie's going to put everybody else away? I'm sure there'll be some hangers on. Like, I'm sure Michael Bloomberg, like, I, th I heard he was trying to do, like, a contested uh, delegation. Like, he was trying to sneak his way in there. But I don't think anyone else is going to pose, like, a serious challenge to him. Anybody else? I definitely agree. Like, maybe Mike Bloomberg, but, like, he used to be um, the mayor when I was growing up in New York City. 
So it's personal for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Because like there was a lot of like questionable things he did. So definitely, yeah. probably not. Yeah. So you're not. You're not into Bloomberg whatsoever. No, not at all. No. <laughs> What brought you guys out to Bernie Sanders rally today? Um, well, like I'm young and I'm a teen and like people just think like, oh, we shouldn't be involved in stuff like that. Because like teens are immature when really there's like more adults that I see are like more immature than me at my age because I'm only 16. And like I just like came out to the Bernie San- Sanders um, rally because like, I don't know, I just want to support him because I feel like he would be like a great future president and way better than Trump would be. And it's, I ha- I know people have their reasonings for Trump, but like. Trump only cares about like money and this and that and that. Bernie, like he actually cares about people and like we would want a president that cares about us instead of a president that like cares about money and nobody but himself. I really just like want to be able to go to this. Like it's not often that you see people coming out to Springfield and like like giving the people here a reason to come to these types of events because a lot of us want to get involved but a lot of like the youth and adults here don't really know how so this is like a really good opportunity. No, I mean, this is a campaign that gets a lot of abuse from the media, and so people talk back, and a lot of these media types don't like being talked back to, and that's why they think people are toxic, but, I mean, I'm not going to ask you to put you on the spot, but you don't see too many toxic people here, do you? Probably not, pretty no. good move, right? Pretty, nice. pretty yeah. friendly, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the essence of the campaign. <laughs> How'd the rally go? I was home drinking wine and editing my my video. And now I have the great pleasure of introducing to you the next president of the United States. Screamers. We have some screamers. We have some screamers. It's <laughs> a lot. Not a lot of people of color. No. At oh, all. yeah, white people love Bernie. It was really loud. That's for sure. A lot of straight white men. Yes. It was well, the observation. We are here together for two fundamental purposes. Number one, we are united as a people. We are united together to make sure that we defeat Donald Trump, the worst president in the modern history of this country. Donald Trump is a pathological liar. And no matter what your political view may be, you know that we cannot continue having someone whose word means nothing because he lies all the time. It was just like watching Bernie Sanders on TV. Like, Mm -hmm. I wasn't inspired by his presence in the room. To be honest, it was like okay. his main platform points. Right. And he was like, on to the next one, on to the next right. one. Thanks for heading, like, thanks yeah. for coming out. And it's yeah. like, okay. It felt like a formula mm-hmm. almost. It felt very routine. There wasn't a lot of passion. Mm-hmm. I just didn't feel it. I didn't feel the burn, mm-hmm. y'all. Mm-hmm. No. I just didn't feel it. It didn't seem genuine. Interesting. And, and, I'm, and he very well could be. I'm not saying he's True. not. True. This could be like his be eighth event of the day. Yeah, he right. could be like so tired. He's on this huge he campaign. He does this every day. I get it, but just personally, I just didn't. I didn't resonate with right. that at all. I will say though, if I was on the fence about Bernie and I went to that, I would probably leave the exact same as I was mm. before. Mm. It, it didn't convince me, and I am on the fence, I guess, about mm-hmm. Bernie. So it's honest. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't leave convinced. I was like, I just saw Bernie Sanders in person, and I feel like. Eh, yeah, like you saw an internet video. Yeah, it's kind of like I knew all of that. Like I wanted him to convince me to vote right. for him. Last year, last year, while 87 million people were uninsured or underinsured, and we paid the highest prices in the world for drugs, the healthcare industry made a hundred billion dollars in profit. He was, that was a very like mirrored room. 
that was he was speaking to his people his supporters yeah. that was not new people coming to see him yeah it did not there was like when he was talking about the grassroots movement i was like this kind of feels like very 2016 for for you mm -hmm. and in 2020 i get that you have name recognition and i think sometimes that is mistaken as this massive grassroots movement when really it's like you've just made a lot of splash and i'm not entirely sure that you've sold everybody on what you're trying to do. And what the United Nations is telling us is if we don't get our act together, there will be several hundred million climate refugees by the end of the century. That is what the scientists, not Bernie Sanders, that's what the scientists are telling us. And that is why, that is why unapologetically, I have introduced the most sweeping climate change proposal ever introduced by any candidate for federal. Something honestly to like be thinking about at our age is to see how we are spoken to by candidates, mm -hmm. by politicians in general, because they, they don't think that we are able to think critically. Like everything is, very sweeping, mm -hmm. very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, not generalized, but definitive. Like mm -hmm. they make definitive statements. And I think, I think people assume of a voting body that they can't handle nuance and mm -hmm. that they can't handle reality mm -hmm. and roadblocks mm -hmm. and things like that. And maybe, I don't know, maybe on the large, maybe they're right. But I, I wonder with our generation growing up, whether or not that will shift. We're gonna beat Trump and beat him badly. And the reason that we're gonna beat him is that we are gonna create in November the largest voter turnout in the history of this country. Second pizza. Our second pizza that we got because of this trauma. <laughs> Honestly, I'll eat the sock pizza. I don't give a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. We're eating the sock pizza. I'm taking the pizza off the table.